Savannah River around the back side. Statue on the left. This is called the Waving Girl Statue. And it's a statue of a lady by the name of Florence Martis. She lived with her brother who ran the White House on Elba Island about a mile downstream here. And the story is she fell in love... Folks, this is a classic example of English Regency style architecture, one of several that was designed by William J. He spent about three years in the city and designed them on the tour. William J., the English Regency style. On the left, Oglethorpe Square, named for our colonial founder, James Edward Chichi, the chief of the Amacraw Indians who was so helpful to Oglethorpe. <laughs> that was the burial spot of Tom Chichi. They dismantled Tomachichi's grave site and put up the Gordon Monument. That so angered his daughter-in-law that she had this huge boulder brought down from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Placed the plaque on her to honor Tomachichi and placed it there in the corner of the square. That's called the Tomachichi Rock. She said she did not want Tomachichi to be forgotten, bless her heart. But Tomachichi is actually buried beneath the Gordon Monument. The people at Stone Mountain sent her a bill for one dollar for that rock. It said, due on Judgment Day. She sent him a dollar back the very next day and said, I'll be much too busy on Judgment Day and I don't want to have any debt. <laughs> that was the mother of Juliet Lowe, a very practical lady. Coming up on the left here at the end of the block, another English Regency style home designed by William J. This home was built in the early 1800s. But it's more notable as the birthplace of Juliet Lowe, the founder of the Girl Scouts. Juliet Lowe was born in this home on your left, Halloween night, 1860. She founded the Girl Scouts in 1912 and passed away in 1927. That is a house museum today. And it's owned by the Girl Scouts of America, the Juliet Gordon Lowe birthplace. One of our house museums. We're back on Oglethorpe Avenue once again, headed west. Seems like we always end up on Oglethorpe Avenue on this tour. <laughs> Most of you'll notice all of the medians in the downtown area, they're all planted with live oak trees on the exterior. The state tree of Georgia. They're called live oaks because they stay green all year round. They never lose all their leaves. And in the center, these are azalea bushes. They bloom once a year, every spring. Beautiful pink and white flowers. And if you're lucky enough, very, very ugly buildings. <laughs> Coming up next is Telfair Square, named for the Lord himself. And when it was weighed out, it was called St. James Square. But in the 1890s, it was changed to Telfair Square to honor the Telfair family. Telfair family. Mary Telfair was the last of the Telfairs. She never married. And when Mary Telfair died in the 1880s, she donated the home to the Georgia Historical Society to be used as an art museum. And it was the first art museum in the Southeast. The Telfair Academy of Arts and Sciences, one of our house museums open to the public. This is stock number nine the Telfair Academy of Arts and Sciences, the old Telfair Mansion. The five statues you see in the front of the home, these would be part of the art museum. Rubens, Raphael, Rembrandt, Phidias, and Michael. Souvenir shops, lounges, you name it, you'll find it here. We're riding right through the middle of City Market, one block to the right and one block to the left. Lots of restaurants, gift shops, you name it. We're going to make two stops here. Our next stop will be stop number 10 on the eastern end of the market. And our last stop, stop number six. And a beautiful monument in the center. The monument is to General Nathaniel Green of Rhode Island, George Washington's friend. Green, when Overbrook drew the plan for the city, this is where the Anglican congregation stood, and they've been here ever since. However, this is church building number three. <laughs> Built in the late 18, early 19, Congress Street. Before the Revolution, this was called Prince Street. One of the many street names that was changed after the Revolution. Royal Governors.
Georgia became a crown colony in 1754, and Sir John Reynolds was the first of the royal governors. The statue in the middle of the square is John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist faith, preached here at Christ Church when Oglethorpe was here. And on the right, the Lucas Theater, finished in 1921, built as a vaudeville-style theater, and it's still in operation today. Run by guess who? <laughs> the Savannah College of Art and Design. Who else? John Wesley in the center of the square, the founder of the Methodist faith. The pink building on the other side of the square is the Pink House Restaurant, home of James Habersham. Settlers. He built that home for his family in the late 1700s. It was made of red brick and it was covered with a coat of white stucco. But when it rained, the red brick bled through and turned it pink. So they kept painting it white, and every time it rained, it came back pink again. <laughs> so finally, they just left it pink. That is the Pink House restaurant today, the old Habersham home. Going down to River Street, where all the money was made back in the day. Hold on, folks, this is a bumpy ride. We're riding over what's called ballast stones. These were placed in the hulls of the ships when they came over here to get the cotton to make them sit low enough in the water where they wouldn't tip over. All right, 42 feet above the river. And this is the Savannah River coming into view. There's more Savannah River around the back side of those buildings on the other side. The one straight ahead is our Savannah Convention Center. And the one to the right of that is the Weston Harbor Resort Hotel, but there's more Savannah River around the back side. That is an island in the middle of the river. It's called Hutchinson Island, right in the middle of the Savannah River. This is River Street, one way east. And this is where all the money was made back in the day. These four-story buildings, the top two floors were cotton brokers' offices, and the bottom two floors were storage for the cotton back in the day. Restored in the 1970s, they now serve as hotels, restaurants, gift shops, art galleries, art studios, souvenir shops, candy stores, you name it, you'll find it here. That's on River Street, 12 and 13. Now, when Oglethorpe got here in 1733, this river was only 12 feet deep. But over the years, it's been dredged to a depth of over 40 feet to allow the larger ships to come into the port. Savannah today is the second busiest container port on the East Coast, second only to New York City. Coming up to stop number 13, the river imagine you'll find in these two buildings. This is stop number 13, River Street Marketplace. There'll be another trolley by each one of these stops approximately every 20 minutes. Folks, if you have paper tickets, please get them out and show them to this fella. He just wants to make sure nobody's cheating. Or Savannah River around the back side, right in the middle of the Savannah River. Coming up straight ahead, the bronze statue on the left. This is called the Waving Girl Statue. And it's a statue of a lady by the name of Florence Martis. She lived with her brother who ran the White House on Elba Island about a mile downstream here. And the story is she fell in love with a sailor. That fella told her he was going to come back here and marry her. So every time a ship came down the river, she'd get out on top of that lighthouse and wave that towel to let him know she was still here waiting on him. Wow. Guess what, folks? She waved that towel for over 40 years. <laughs> this is the waving girl. <laughs> on the left, that monument was placed there during the 1996 Summer Olympic Games, which were held in Atlanta, Georgia. Some of the uh, sailing events were held here. People to work and ring again in the afternoon to let them know it was time to get off. <laughs> Last hands in that building back in the day. The last cotton broker left that building in 1956 when the cotton industry died out here. 
due to the introduction of synthetic fabrics, the boll weevil.